Hi, you guys. I am going to be going through the book of Galatians next. But in studying for going through the book of Philippians, I came across a couple of verses that I've heard and I just forgot about. And it's so interesting. They come from Philippians 4. So this is going to be something that I enjoy getting into. So I'm kind of previewing what is to come regarding Philippians. Interestingly enough, see, and this stems from, if you weren't aware, this stems from going through the book of Acts. I decided to go through the epistles that correspond to the places on the missionary journey where they exist. This began in Acts 16. Uh, we were introduced to Timothy, Timotheus, and so I went through First and Second Timothy. Uh, and next we are introduced to Galatia and then Philippi in the same chapter. So I'm going to go through the book of Galatians, and then I'm going to go through the book of Philippians. In Acts 17, we're going to be introduced to the missionary journey to Thessalonica, where I will go through 1st and 2nd Thessalonians. So what's interesting is um, in the natural sequence of mentions in Acts 16 and then 17, it's Philippians and then Thessalonica, uh, Philippi and then Thessalonica. Well, Thessalon uh, Thessalonica is actually mentioned in Philippians 4. So it's a, a natural segue, and I thought that that was very interesting. Um, in Philippians 4, 15, he says, Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica ye sent once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. So they were doing good things and sending him uh, things when he was in Thess Thessalonica which we will learn about in 1 Thessalonians. Um, so it's kind of interesting there's a natural segue. But I, I haven't been able to get this, this thought out of my head in transitioning from Philippians to Thessalonians. And we have this, in 2 Thessalonians specifically, we have this massive ongoing argument about what specific language means in, the, uh, in 2 Thessalonians 2 as regards the falling away. Now, what's interesting is when we, we were talking through 1 Timothy in chapter 6, it says, in verse 4, he is proud knowing nothing but doting with questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings. Now, obviously, that's not talking about godly people, or that's talking about ungodly people, people who are not saved by grace through faith, but just the whole striving over the meaning of words. Don't we do that quite often? And 2 Thessalonians 2 is a prime example of this. What is meant by the departure? What is meant by the restrainer, which technically isn't even a term used in that chapter? What is meant by the falling away or a falling away? The striving over the meaning of words, which I discussed in the last set of epistles I went through, is brought into full focus in 2 Thessalonians because there is much striving about the meaning of words in that chapter. And the fun part about that is it literally doesn't have anything to do with what the vast majority of people make it. On both sides of the, uh, the main groups of conversation, uh, a falling away general apostasy versus like the departure as the rapture of the church. It's got nothing to do with either one of those things. So it's a very interesting conversation. And as I sit here and I say this, forward looking to going through the book of first, the books of first and second Thessalonians and the meaning of words and things like that. And I realize that people don't like hearing what I have said and what I will again say about what that chapter is actually talking about because it's not what they want to hear. People have a very difficult time these days with listening to things that depart from what they want to hear, whether it's accurate or not. And this kind of goes into what we learned in 2 Thessalonians about itching ears. People seeking out those who say what they want to hear rather than teaching sound doctrine. And that can occur within the church also amongst saved people. <laughs> I mean, just because you're saved doesn't mean every single thing that you believe might 
always be sound doctrine. It may or may not be. I, I don't know. I, I don't know who you are. But in setting up the conversation for going through First and Second Thessalonians, Philippians does a wonderful thing. And it says in Philippians 4, 7, And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And we should be very glad of that, that regardless of whether every single bit of our doctrine is sound, we are saved by grace through faith. And the gracious part of that is that you don't have to have every single thing right, and probably none of us are going to have every single thing right. Um, just the, the nature of how that goes. Underscoring the grace of God that he's going to save us anyway, despite the fact that we don't have every single thing right because we are positionally in Christ. But he says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, it doesn't matter if it is what you want to hear, you need to pay attention to the truth, even if it is what you do not want to hear, or you don't like it because it doesn't put something as soon as you want it to, or it doesn't mean what you thought it meant. That you're striving over the meaning of words in this situation where it's actually not even relevant. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Now, I understand that there are some things that we're dwelling on that are going on in the world these days that aren't honest and just and lovely and of good report and virtuous and worthy of praise. They are things that stir up strife and they uh, are absent of peace. They are absent of, I don't know, we, we know what's going on in the world these days. And we just have to remember to dwell on the things that are within our control, to dwell on the things that are permanent, not temporary. What's going on in this world right now is literally meaningless. It, it just is. And I understand that some people believe that they're fighting the good fight for a good cause, that they're being noble. But what are we told when we get to Acts 17 about the church of Thessalonica? Well, actually, it's the Bereans where he went after he left Thessalonica, after Paul left Thessalonica, being kicked out by the Jews who... Um, wanted his head for telling them to depart from the law and follow Christ. That the Bereans were more noble than the Jews at Thessalonica and that they searched the scriptures daily to see which things are true. Which ties into, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, dwell on these. So I'm going to leave you with a final thought before we get into the law and the book of Galatians. I don't care. What is going on in the world these days? I don't care what people think is noble or what noble, what good fight they're fighting. Because at the end of the day, in a couple of years, we're all going to be gone from this place anyway. And none of it's going to matter. The truth of the matter is, and what we need to dwell on is this. Regardless of what you think is noble and what good fight you're fighting... This is what we need to remember and dwell on as a true and pure and just and lovely thing. Romans 8, 38. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That is what we need to be dwelling on. And that is where our nobility comes from, is perpetuating that instead of fear or strife or division or striving over the meaning of words and or all these other things. Remembering that our position is in Christ and there's nothing that can take that away from us. I'll see you guys later.